Hello, that's a brief introduction to the Cork Volca sample, a machine that I bought originally for my little daughter with six years, but she's somehow not so convinced for using it. But I played around with it for a while and I thought it would be nice to share my experiences with it. So it's really a very quick walkthrough through the main functions, at least the ones that um, I've used and that I found most exciting um, for this machine. Um, first of all, the Volker sample, um, as its name says, it's a sampler, so you can play samples that are um, linked to these individual tracks. We have 10 tracks um, that you can play, whereas I think two of them are shared, 9 and 10. So you can either use 9 or 10, not both at the same time, if you trigger them. Um, each of the parameters, each of the track, um, can be controlled by the, the set of programmable parameters, which is quite nice. Um, so you can, first of all, adjust the, the sample that you play, but you can also record the changes of these parameters. So if you move the knobs, you can record um, the changes while it plays. So you can record it and you can adjust it in detail after you recorded something, or you can um, make these parameter locks um, also individually by changing the triggers um, in the sequence um, as detailed as you like. The screen shows you all the values of the parameters, so it's um, you can, in principle, adjust them super detailed. But for me, this device works, works best as a kind of an improvisation machine. So I tend to play around with it without using it for a, a very precise kind of a composition tool. But you could if you like. But and now let's play around with it and, and demonstrate how the whole thing works. So as I mentioned, you can trigger the samples. Um, it comes with 120 or 28 samples. Um, so I use these factory samples. You can also upload your own samples, but that's a bit of a challenge. At least I needed um, a few hours to figure out why the device didn't connect to my computer. And there is some um, settings for USB devices. So it has to be between one and or zero and 10 in the list of devices, otherwise it didn't work. Um, I've linked a description that I found in a forum that helps you to solve this problem. When it's solved, you can just connect it with this micro USB and upload your own samples, but it's quite limited in terms of the um, memory it, have, it has, so you cannot upload a lot and only very short samples. But um, I think this works very well for the concept of this machine. Um, now, the, um, this part controls primarily, controls primarily the sequencer, so that's the sequencer, and um, for recording, for example, individual steps um, for track one, for this kick drum, for example, we can activate this, the step mode, so the black um, titles are the normal modes for these buttons, so step mode, um, and then we can just activate the steps that we want to um, play like this. And if you play it, then you recorded it. Very simple. You can also, so let's have this as a snare. So changing samples, if you activate the track, and then you can change the sample by rotating the knob. Let's keep it here. And of course, you can adjust all these parameters. So here you have the start and the length of the sample. I will demonstrate it later. And the pitch control, so we can pitch it up. Volume. So 
and the attack decay curve for the pitch um, and the speed of the sample. So in the slower and slow the pitch it down and up. Um, the level, of course, level control, panning and attack decay curve for the sample itself. Um, you can also live record whatever you do here. So um, if I play around and I think I have a, a good beat, good idea, then we can directly record it. So it just runs now, whatever I do is recorded. Um, and it over and so it, it adds new triggers if you continue um, then you just add so but we can edit what we've recorded um, so if you look into here then you see the the lights at the top row these are the or this shows the active steps and here you see we are in track number two so we can just reduce these steps and we can go to track number three just check the same maybe we add here collapse okay now we have a basic rhythm and let's add a hi-hat um, either by the step recording mode um, deactivating a few ones um, and now one thing that I find really nice for experimenting of course you can now change for example the length of the um, sample either by the length or by the decay and you can record these changes as mentioned so that's this parameter recording parameter locks and this works by pressing function and motion sequence on so now you see here this motion sequence um, on off now it's off on and now if you press the record button it records for 16 steps whatever you do with your knobs and then it ends so you can um, it's not um, overriding the changes that you do once so let's try this with the sample length of this hi-hat so to make it a bit more dynamic something like this okay now i start recording So you see now it stops automatically. This knob is colored red. This means I've recorded something in this um, track for my height. I had. And if you listen, the length is changing during the recording. Um, warning, 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 warning. Let's do warning, this warning, with another warning, sample where it's a bit warning, more warning, obvious. Warning. Let's take this one and um, now just record a few. Warning, 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 war
If you don't like what you've recorded, you can just delete it by function and clear. And if you turn off, no parameter locks are recorded anymore. You want to record it again, don't picture it. Again, speak. Maybe the start point. And okay, so now we have the changes. We can edit what we've recorded um, in more detail if you activate the step mode. And we are still in track 8 with our kind of voice sample. If you press this step and change the parameter view, so pitch it up maximum. So you here I changed this parameter. As long as you press, you can change the parameter. So with this method you can change all parameters for this trigger. And so with this method you can generate or create very precise changes of your individual steps and parameters. Okay, so that's the sample manipulation. We also have the reverb here. That's um, um, and if we want to turn on the reverb for this um, for this track, um, function reverb. I hope Activate for the track that you want, and then you see it's activated. Now we can add reverb for this track. We can mute the other tracks to hear better. So mute, just press it and deactivate the tracks. So without reverb, adding reverb. Activate the other tracks again. So for the, um, this kind of the, the performance um, method, you have to make performances with this box. That's quite nice because you see it's very fast to new tracks and to add tracks again. And we can also solo tracks by function solo. Then do one track. No tracks again. Um, and some very nice features that I like a lot with this box is the step jump, for example. So here you can repeat individual steps while the sequence are plays. So let's try it with the step number five. So here below this step or on this step, we have a kick drum, so you have a kick. Whatever you have will be repeated. If there's nothing, you will do nothing or only the hi-hat, for example. And you can do this quite vertically, and it always keeps in, in sync, and it always jumps back to the position of the sequence, so it continues. So we are always somehow um, making variations, but it still works. Yeah, quite nice. um, and another quite nice feature is the active steps. And function active steps, and you are now in this active steps mode, we can deactivate steps. So if we deactivate a few steps, you realize the whole rhythm, the whole sequence is changing because it skips these steps completely. They are not muted, they are skipped by the sequence. So you will see it jumps above these empty um, triggers. And that's also quite nice for performance mode, so just switching or inverting the whole um, sequence of these active steps. We're playing around a little bit here, so 
generates quite fast variations for your sequence. Okay. And if you want to go back to your normal sequence, just function and active steps and everything is deleted. So with these um, step jumps and active steps, I think this makes the whole box um, quite flexible in terms of bringing in variations to the sequence because your sequence is limited to 16 steps and you have these 10 um, tracks. But with these two modes, um, you can play around a lot. And you also have this kind of um, DJ equalizer. So these are the main features that I've used so far with the Korg Walker sample that I really like a lot. And what I didn't like is the noise that's generated by the output. And also if you use it without um, external speakers, it generates quite a lot of noise, which is um, noticeable. And I don't know why this is the case, but that's not ideal. Um, you can run it with batteries, which is really fun to play wherever you like. It is cool that you have this speaker. Um, without noise, it would be even better. Okay, so that's the short overview of the Cord Walker sample. I hope you enjoyed it and get a, a little bit of an impression of what you can do with this machine. As mentioned, I really liked it and let's see if I will keep it. You know, 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 you know,